Hey guys, John here, and welcome back to Synthesizer Fundamentals. This is lesson two, and today's topic is the basics of phase. And stick around to the end of the video because we're gonna do some cool things with phase, so let's get started. Okay, so here we are in module two, the basics of phase. Now we have to ask ourselves, what is phase exactly? So the initial phase of a waveform begins once it crosses the amplitude axis. Now the entire phase cycle of a waveform will be 360 degrees. And we can kind of think of this like a circle or like if we had a compass in our hands, right? So if we shift the phase of a sine wave by 90 degrees, that's what's gonna be called a cosine of that waveform. Now here's a really cool diagram or like a graphic here that kind of represents this as a circle showing the sine wave and the cosine as well. So I found this one kind of interesting and it kind of really ties this in together because we can think of this in degrees like a circle as we can see this on screen as a sine wave. And if we shift the degrees by 180, this is going to invert the polarity resulting in silence. That's if the waveforms are the exact same. And this is because every positive value will have a corresponding negative value, which is gonna equal zero or silence, also known as phase cancellation. So here's kind of another example of that as well. As the waveforms come together, the amplitude is going to be increased because those values are added together. And once they get to a certain middle point, 180 degrees, they're going to subtract from each other, right? Because plus one, if you add negative one to that, that's going to be zero. Now, whenever we change the phase of a waveform against another, we're gonna get a different waveform. And this is because all the differences in phase are gonna add and subtract from each other. So this is kind of an interesting example of this as well, kind of a frozen look at this here. So on the left-hand side, we see these two sine waves here at the bottom. Now these are gonna be the equal frequency and equal amplitude. And if we add these together, it's just going to increase the amplitude here. However, if we look down over here, we can see that these are gonna be inverted, so by 180 degrees. So on this one, if we go up here into positive territory, we have the exact same value, but in negative down over here, which is gonna result in silence all the way across the board. And here's a cool little fun fact. If we add two sine waves of the same pitch at any different phase offset that we like, it's always going to produce another sine wave. So let's take a look in Bitwig Studio and see what all this looks like and what it sounds like. All right, so I have a couple things prepared for you guys. So the first one is gonna be a device I built inside of the Bitwig Grid. The second is gonna be a demonstration with Serum. And then the third is a demonstration with Diva. Okay, so here is the device I built inside the Bitway Grid to demonstrate what's going on here. Now, I commented everything pretty well, but just in case, let's go through everything one by one. So here on the left-hand side, we have two oscillators. Both of these are gonna be sine waves. The first one red and the second one blue, they're gonna be the same frequency and the same amplitude. Now, both of these go out of their outputs into an attenuate knob individually, and then out of their own attenuate knobs, they go into an oscilloscope so we can actually see what's going on here. Now, another copy is getting sent here to this module that's going to sum both of these signals together. And then now they're gonna go into their own envelope and then also another attenuate knob so we can control the volume or the amplitude of these two waveforms together. And that's gonna be what we're hearing. And that's also gonna be what we're seeing here in the yellow oscilloscope right over here. So now if we play a note, what we're hearing is gonna be two different sine waves. Now you might be wondering why do we only see one right over here? And that's because both the red and the blue sine wave are gonna be in the exact same phase. Now, if we zoom in over here, this purple knob here is gonna control the phase of these different sine waves right over here. So as we change the blue one here, we can see that we can change it from the red one. Now take a listen to see what happens as we change the phase. If we play a higher note. Now, an interesting spot here is once we're hearing this note, we can see that both of these signals are gonna be summed together and that's gonna be what this is on the yellow oscilloscope. Now, if we bring down the volume of the second one, This is showing exactly what we just saw in that last diagram. Where once you add two of the same sine waves or the two waveforms together, it's going to just increase in amplitude if they are the same phase. Now also, if we change this phase too, we can get to a point where we have phase cancellation. Now we're pretty close here. We do have a tiny bit of signal, but if we look here exactly what our percentage is, we're maybe like 50, 51.2, there's gonna be certain value inside there that's going to result in absolute phase cancellation.
So now that we know we can change the face of both of these oscillators via this knob here on the left hand side, let's bring down the volume of the blue one here. So now we're just listening to the red one. So what happens if we change the phase here? Maybe again, and again. So we don't really notice anything different. However, if we hold down a key and start moving this phase, we can hear the pitch start to change. So knowing that if we can modulate the phase of a waveform, we can modulate the pitch of it as well. So what we can do is over here on the left-hand side, I have made an LFO just for that reason. So if we look at this LFO, we can see that this is moving in five Hertz. It's a triangle wave. Now, if we modulate this knob here with this LFO, take a look at what happens. And you can also see the waveform starting to move around. We can change it to a sine wave. So another really cool thing that we can do with phase is, for example, right now we have both sine waves. Now, if we change these to be a little bit more interesting, so for example, on this skew on this first one, what we can do, it makes something kind of interesting. So let's control click this and let's go for 20% here. And for this fold, let's control click this and let's say 10. And we can do the same thing on the second one. So control click and we did 20 for the first one. And then for the fold, we did 10. So now both of these waveforms are gonna be the same again, but also a more interesting complex waveform. So we have something kind of like that. Now, if we take the other LFO, this LFO one right over here and see what's going on here. So this one is moving very, very slow at 0.04 Hertz. And this is gonna be a triangle wave. So now what happens if we modulate the phase with this LFO? So we just click this guy here. Let's give a little bit of depth, something kind of like that. Now, right now we're in a monophonic patch here. However, if we click up here and let's maybe go for maybe 10 voices or something like that, and it's gonna be a little bit more interesting and we can also, let's get out of this modulation view. Let's also increase our release of our amp envelope as well. So we can start getting something interesting like that. We can always mess around with the rate here. So maybe we can go a little bit faster, maybe 0.06. So definitely pretty cool so far. Now let's say for example, we select all this here and before we go into this attenuate, maybe what we can do if we wanna make some kind of patch out of this, we can go to a filter and this low pass MG is pretty cool. So we can drag, in, drag and drop this right over here. Something kind of like that, bring the resonance down. And also what we can do is go up to here an envelope, maybe an ADSR, something kind of like that. And we can bring this out here into our filter. Maybe bring up our attenuate as well. Add a little bit of delay. And this is very easy to do as well. Kind of cool there. And then finally, you can add a reverb onto this and see what that sounds like. So you can definitely get a really cool patch just by doing a little bit of phase modulation with a very slow LFO. And to add on to this, maybe before this delay, we want to add a chorus and kind of spice things up just a little bit.
So yeah, don't overlook the phase knob and different types of synthesizers. You can get a lot of cool textures by slowly moving the phase or even rapidly moving the phase as well. Okay, so now we're inside Serum and let's try to apply what we just did in the grid to Serum. So right now we have an init patch, a saw wave. Let's turn on oscillator B. We have another saw wave, which results in a louder saw wave. Now, if we find the phase knob for oscillator B and start moving this around here, we're gonna get an interesting tone here. Now let's control click this and let's use LFO one to slowly sweep this phase. Now drag and drop this here. And this might be a little bit fast. So we need to slow this down. So let's uncheck BPM and start bringing the rate down. Now this is two sound waves with a little bit of phase modulation and some extra release. And even if we turn on the filter and send both of them to there, maybe even use the same LFO to modulate the cutoff here. Now we can even do the same thing here. Let's go ahead and add a uh, delay. Maybe a chorus. And finally, a little bit of reverb, or we can select this here and use some Valhalla Vintage Verb, which is my personal favorite. So yeah, long story short, basically using two of the same waveform and slowly moving the phase of one of them can really give you some interesting textures. Okay, so now we're inside Diva and there's something specific to phase that I wanted to share with you guys about this synth specifically. So if we right click this, go to an init preset, let's take oscillator three, two out of the mix and let's bring our cut up all the way to the top and bring our volume down just a little bit. So we just have a saw wave. Okay, so now if we go into the trimmers panel, we can see over here we have something called reset phase and we have oscillator one, two, and three. And on a default init patch, this is going to be on analog. So if we click this and go to OSC reset, now these knobs are going to determine where in the phase cycle of each oscillator that the phase is going to reset at. Now, this might sound kind of like what's going on here, but it's actually very important if you want to make maybe some percussive sounds or you want a certain attack to sound a certain way every single time you hit that note. So for example, we have one oscillator in the mix and we are moving this first oscillator knob. We're not gonna hear any noticeable difference. And that's because if we listen to one waveform and we change the, the start phase of that waveform, we're not gonna hear any difference. It really doesn't matter to us. It's only when it's in relation to something else, like oscillator two, for example. So if you brought this one all the way into the mix and now we start changing this knob, to get a much different tonality every single time. Now, like I said, this is important if you want to do percussive stuff, maybe you're making a snare drum or any kind of like maybe a certain bass that you want a certain attack to sound the same every single time. You might have these two oscillators going up next to each other and kind of just sweeping around and seeing what you like the best. So for example, let's say I go to my envelope, let's go to analog here, let's bring our sustain all the way down. And we want to have maybe a click or a transient like this here. Maybe we like that higher pitch version right over here. Or maybe something kind of like that. All right, that might be kind of cool. And then we can maybe add some reverb to that. And then maybe we decided we don't like that and we want to change up the uh, the face here.
But yeah, just goes to show, don't overlook the face because the relationship between two different waveforms can be very important. And actually, you can do a lot of interesting things just with two oscillators and messing around with a phase of one of them or even both of them. So later on in the course, we're going to go deeper into phase once we start talking about flanging, chorus, comb filtering, phase distortion, things like that. And we're also going to actually build our own effects inside the Bitwig grid, which is a lot of fun, and you can really make some cool things. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something. In the next lesson, we're going to be talking about the harmonic series, which is a very interesting topic and something that has really opened my eyes to sound design and just audio in general. So thank you again for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.